So welcome to another exploration into consciousness with the Earth Nouveau Harbors. And today we've got Herminia kicking it off for us with, uh, with her impressions from a book, which is called The Sorcerer's Consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, and part of, part of the idea of this is to, to really look into more tools and practices to raise our awareness and, and to move beyond the limitations of the day-to-day -day activities. So I'm going to pass it on to uh, Herminia. Hey, hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm a little chilly where I am. That's why I lose all cover. <laughs> uh, any case, you know, the reason that I recommend this, um, this book uh, created me a lot um benefit and gave me some, you know, sometimes when I was very down, just reading a couple of chapters, it bring me back. And uh, it's an interesting thing that this book, uh, this book came to me through, in one of my dreams, I was at that time playing, uh, working with a uh, violet flame. And then in my dream, somebody came and told me, uh, look for the uh, Mayans, uh, transcendental, transcendent, transcendental travel of the Mayans. And I asked one of my friends that she was in the spiritual um, path. And she said, oh, I don't have anything similar like that. And I went with my daughter to a bookstore. And I was looking just, you know, with her. And the suddenly I feel like sit down in the floor between the aisles in the, in the, in the, in the bookstore. And then when I, I lift my head, I see this book. It catch my attention because if you see the portrait, it's like somebody's traveling in the air. And I grab it and I took it home. Uh, I read a, no, the whole book. However, um, a couple of weeks later, I just sat down and I, I couldn't stop reading it. And the interesting thing that there's so many instructions in this book that uh, remember myself so many things I have been going through. If I will pay attention to that book from the beginning, I won't be go through many things that I had to experience. And in any case, but well, you know, some people say, well, you know, the experience is experience and give you the strength that you have today. Uh, in any case, um, I think in that moment, the book was like a too much for me because you know, the program that we have, that it was no, like they say, it was not in my inventory many of the instructions that she was receiving in her path. And uh, the other day when Martina mentioned uh, to come in with the, uh, mentioned what I would like to do for the title for, for the meeting. And I was to remember chapter 12 in this book has so much, uh, because I always has been fascinated by the uh, etheric etheric bodies the um the aesthetic uh energy field and uh and that chapter gave me so much in inside myself and uh, i can see when he explained it to her you know um i can see myself there like uh, following that and then i had a few questions here those questions are for me just to you know to get in because when I, I was thinking about myself, uh, I asked myself this question. I said, that was just our last Monday night. I asked myself, for how long I intend to be here in this planet, playing the same melodrama or this narrative of control and manipulation? Do I really want to continue the never ending journey of sleepiness? with just a few moments of glimpsing satisfaction? Where is the real joy of this journey? What I really want to accomplish in this game? Do I really want to be in this never ending wheel? Do I really want to put a bandage in my sorrows experiences and pretend that nothing happens? Who is the one that receives benefits from my life experiences? Who are the controllers that keep us in this anesthetic state? How can I get out of this farming energy game? Do I really want to get out of this game? And then I stop there. 
<laughs> because uh, I was because you know I sometimes I was thinking like I want just to get out of this planet and then in one moment then we remember that we are here to resolve some situation that happened in eons or 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 eons or or time. And then it's like, a, it's like a really this, uh, like I mentioned last week uh, that I was feeling boring, but it was not boring about the the meeting that we have. It was the boring that this society presenting like so much drama in this planet. It's like, a, it's a war here in the side, to the east, to the, east, to the north, to the west. Always something to keeping us like in, in this, uh, fight and flight more a small uh mode and then uh my my consciousness awareness in this book is helping me for example there is one 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 part in one of the book that um uh clara one of the the teacher for Tai taisha said i said to her in thing is the power that upholds the universe is the force that gives focus to everything. It makes the world happen. And then when that happens, it, well, when we are in the quantum field, there is no, the quantum field is like the, like the material for creation. It's that, like it doesn't have, it's not positive, no negative, there's no, uh, female, there's nothing, just the rough material that we can create. And then from that is manifesting so many different worlds. And, uh, and, the, and it's, it's in one point they said that it cannot be explained, it cannot feel it, you just have to know it. And uh, there's a, like Martina, you were mentioned the beginning about, um, Matias Stefano, and I saw one of his videos that where he mentioned that we use different levels of consciousness to experience the 3D world. Like we use in like angels, angels, a, a master, a spiritual guidance. However, it's us in self using different level to manifest to experience life here. It's a, and because when Clara uh, mentioned to uh, Taisha in one of the of the conversation that she said, the spirit is not anybody's guardian. It is an abstract, abstract force, neither good nor evil. A force that has no interest whatsoever in us, but that nevertheless respond to our power. Remember, not to our prayers, mind, you, me, but to our power. Remember that the next time you feel like praying for forgiveness. And those things like that give me like this so deep uh, inside myself because I coming from a, you know, Catholic uh, raised child from a family, maybe three, four generations in the Catholic. And then the, where everything was guiltiness and, you know, forgiveness and ask for, for forgiveness and go to the church and then uh, working for everybody except for myself. When I, those, those kind of statements was very, very strong for me to swallow. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know if you <clears throat> can maybe maybe realize uh, that somebody that's thinking about Jesus and Mary, 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 M Mother Mary, you know, all time when you come in with something like that, it's a force that doesn't have any interest in us, but that nevertheless respond to our power, not to our prayers, mind, but to our power. And remember that the next time you feel like praying for forgiveness. I don't know if uh, anyone or you want to say something about that, and then I'll, I'll share later the some of the other highlights I have. So um, just to just to clarify um, what what she's saying is that 
when you're praying or asking mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. help mm-hmm. from either Jesus or Mary, that there are forces mm-hmm. that don't care about us. Mm-hmm. But it's not, it's not about when she mentioned that the spirit, the energy, the force of creation, it's like it doesn't have negative, it doesn't have side, right? Right. It's like the power of the person that you use in that energy that is going to manifest. And uh, for me, it makes sense because nobody what kind of prayer we do, we do and nobody what kind of religion we, we practice is the same energy. It's only that everybody using different way, different direction, different color. And whatever we believe is what it manifests. Because no matter, no se matter the, the religion that we practice, they have the result. Why they have the result? Because they they activate the belief that they have in in that specific practice. But it's not like a, it's one better than the other one. It's just a neutral energy that everybody uses in different way. Some people use it for something good. What do you call good? And some people use it for, for harm other people. You know, but it's the same energy. And then, and oh. then because we have this program, program that good and bad, you know, that's, 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 a, that's what's my taking away. It's the mm-hmm. energy that is there. It's neutral. You're using whatever we want to use it. So it's the belief mechanic that exactly. has the for that calls in the force of the energy and mm-hmm. drives that for the individual manifestation. Exactly, and the power that they that individual has. Mm-hmm. That that was that's that's my taking away, you know, because everybody is different. But for my be for my own being, it makes sense because mm-hmm. I can see everybody practicing different religion and everybody has results, right? And, and it's I- because the the intention and the power that the person bring in. And I would add to all this, uh, with what part of this creation uh, you're working. And uh, to understand what is <clears throat> Donna saying and Clara saying and all this teaching uh, uh, in relation to Don Juan, Don Juan, and all that sorceries that you bring into this our meeting, we have to understand with what kind, what part of creation they are working with. Mm-hmm. If we understand what they are working uh, with, then we will understand what rules, or at least we will approach understanding what rules between um, their interaction, uh, human beings and that power, that source with what they are working. And mm-hmm. to my understanding, I read all his books, Carlos Castaneda and Florinda and Taisha, all those books. I read everything in mm-hmm. my beginning of my awakening. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are a lot of things that are uh, connected to reality. They work with some part of reality. They do. It's not imagination or something, but... My understanding with what they are working and why it's sorcery, this is uh, can explain that you have to go with power, not with uh, connection through prayer, beauty. Uh, they are working with that, in my understanding again, they are working with that t- uh, part of creation uh, and they are mentioning astral world that is responding to power. So it's in my understanding, uh, some part of reality uh, that is not having source power, but have to create uh, some um, tools to use source power. That's why they are talking about power, using power. So they are not supported straightforward with power of the source of this creation. They have to create some tools and rules and ceremonies that will connect our Mm -hmm. source connection 
to that part of creation they are working with to give us humans some kind of impression we are empowered and something happening but mm -hmm. what is happening it's colored but by that uh, part of creation they are working with it's not colored with source uh possibilities and intention it's kind of like coming like distorted path from source to this part of creation that connected to humans who are using sorcery and then using human connection to source sorcery this structure directing experience of human beings into some particular rules, uh, again, who is benefi benefiting from that? Human being benefiting from that or that structure in astral world they're working with? It's my thoughts. Yeah, th this is, and I think this is why we call this uh, show today, we called it sorcery, like from the source versus sources, sorcery. You know, like source, immediate connection to source mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. sorcery, still using mm -hmm. uh, tools and, and certain techniques that are probably, mm -hmm. we could consider them as training wheels, you know. Mm -hmm. once, once, once we get, you know, once we emanate, once we get to the stage where we can emanate source, um, it, it, we, we can start letting go maybe of some of those, tools and techniques that are being used in sorcery in order to mm -hmm. create that empowerment of the human being that Irina is mm -hmm. talking about now absolutely yeah. but mm -hmm. you know I, I, I want to go back to what you were saying in the beginning it's like can we actually uh no you talked about intent because I think the intention is really the one of the key areas here and the, the belief system we, we mentioned as well, the, uh, Tanya mentioned, is, is what overshadows the intent. Mm -hmm. Once we have a very clear intent going, the um, manifestation becomes easier and easier and easier. And mm -hmm. it's almost like it, it, it's a synchronistic uh, flow rather than us having to sit there and contemplate what are we going to create you know and this is one once the intention once there's clarity attached to intention without the um discoloring of a certain belief system that the majority of that belief system is not necessarily ours anyway but it's it's coming from the from the narrative from the global consciousness um then the intent is something that that just creates and all we need to do is we must we, we must stay in that in the flow you know and then we also start realizing that the magic lies in there because at some level you know we have already we're working backwards because we have already agreed upon you know the journey the multi facets of that journey uh before we even came here that obviously prepared from a from a soul's perspective you know uh you, you muted uh Herminia. yeah in that is in that in that uh, saying that you said uh it was my one of my questions i said well if i'm able to uh transform my physical body to aesthetic body where i where do i going to go how i know where i going to go Right. Well, Be the the point is not to transform your physical body into an etheric body, but to acknowledge that you have an etheric body already. We don't mm -hmm. have to transform anything. We have an etheric body. We have an astral body. We have yeah. a causal body. Now you could use a causal body as such because the the caus causality mm -hmm. of the body is defined as the accumulation of all the bodies. Mm -hmm. all the yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the, and the way how don't uh, don't matters because how how 
Marina was mentioned that Taisha had to be like eight months in recapitulation to be able to be, uh, it had this encounter with, with Don Matos. That means that she had to clean all the energy and all those uh, uh, programs we can say in this case that she has, you know, her background, like almost clean completely her um, warehouse or, what, or her identity or what he was to yeah. become yeah. for that experience, to be able to be in front of Don Matus eight months on practice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is, this is what we were kind of like involved into when we allowed that those middle structure appear in our astral world that was mm -hmm. astral world structure that way that they were kind like i don't know uh um what's the word um, dividing humanity uh, mm -hmm. uh, again, this invitation, of course, invitation, what was mm -hmm. human interest, uh, what mm -hmm. human would allow to step into, yes? So they were kind like, um, I'm missing the word, um, farming, 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 really farming humanity, yeah. dividing humanity into some yeah. experiences, yeah. but... Uh, desire for experience wasn't human yeah it was desire for experience of that structure using mm -hmm. humans with their intention and source connection well yeah and then you know the, the interesting thing because uh, uh i had experienced some like for example when uh don matus explained to taisha about the the soft body the aesthetic body this is a soft body a soft body that means that when we were born, we we have we have the awareness that that body is we are because when you see the baby, you can see the energy is completely different. And then when we start growing up, it's going to be depleted. And then uh, like they say, it go when we are born, it's in the center, in this center. And then as soon as we start being programmed through the society and our family, then that energy go deposit to the to the below the navel, uh, uh, like the second chakra. That's why the people say that there's so much power in that chakra, supposedly, because that's that's really where we have the the second brain. They say that it connected with the heart. Some people say like that, and then it's it makes sense for me because that's me for us to be able to experience the uh, physical experience. Then I had to forget about my aesthetic experience, my aesthetic uh, form. And then become my body, my physical body become a, a more physical and less aesthetic. And then that energy got deposited to the to the second chakra in that area, below the navel. Uh, he's explained to her, and he's mentioned that through the breathing, he she, she can awake that 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 part of herself, and then overcome the physical one, and even work through the aesthetic uh, body, and. Uh, and for me, it makes sense that the soft, the soft, uh, that is a very soft, because I remember one time I wake up and my I couldn't lift my my one of my my left arm because it was completely like a, a rubber band. And I wake up and I saw that I couldn't move it because my body was just floppy, yeah, like a rubber band. And then um, I just, I guess my own intuition or my high self indicated me to put it in the pillow and wait for a few minutes until my body was again a, a physical, uh, I could feel it. Because when I hold it like that, I was just floppy. <laughs> you know, that means that we really, like Martina said, we had that power inside us, but we don't know how to use it. That, that technology, that who we are, we forgot how to use it. I want that's, to bring that's... now. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to bring connection second chakra and fear. This is can explain uh, that power, that structure in astral world had. Like we were talking in previous show, it's not the same now. We are no. talking 
mm-hmm. past experiences. So uh, this is how I believe uh, that structure uh, got power over human direction in experience, connecting mm-hmm. to second chakra and fear. Instead of like uh, you, Herminia, mentioning when we born, we centered, and where we are centered, what is about babies? When you look at baby, what is that? What is feeling you have? Oh, it's completely yes. love. Love is yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that center just shifted in some people, and yes, a lot of teachings they talk about that below navel, second chakra, to be. Mm-hmm centered in that uh, it's like a Dantian lower Dantian so it's a source of your power and now we can see that um, even looking from human point of view on those teachings who are talking they talk about power really power Mm -hmm. they don't talk about love they don't talk about beauty they don't talk about uh, flow instead of using some power source to push with your experience, but being in synchronicity, in flow of Mm -hmm. unfoldment of this universal possibilities and your personal intention for experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so using your experience, Herminia, with with, uh, the dreaming body coming into... Mm -hmm you know, with your limb uh, arm. Yes. Uh, because it's connected to the fear and to the solar plexus, like Arena was saying, it's it's very much the consciousness that has left during uh, dream time mm-hmm. coming back into the physical body, you know, connecting the astral bodies, connecting back into the etheric body and the physical body. Now, mm-hmm. our... Uh, I, I'd like to I'd like to look at power now at this stage of awareness. I'd like to look at it as consciousness, as the divine fragmentation that we have, the divine fragmentation of our consciousness is is now finally or slowly or fast, depending on on who we're talking to about, is coming now back into the physicality, connecting into the physical body to give you the strength. So it's like, Mm -hmm. think of it from the dreaming body perspective, consciousness leaving whilst you're sleeping, consciousness Mm -hmm. coming back into the body so that you can physically use your body properly again so that's the power and the strength and the more Mm -hmm. consciousness we are connecting and projecting into the physicality Mm -hmm. the more we are becoming source connected at the same time yeah Yeah. now that's that's almost going beyond the level of soul because last time we talked about the astral body and i Mm -hmm. always like to you know it's it's such a it's a bit of a dangerous uh thing to start mm-hmm. going into separation of spirit and astral body and this and that you know because and and speak from it with authority so you know i i i for this purpose of our conversation we can take the astral body and the spirit let's throw it all together into the source connecting to source connecting beyond our physical sort of uh, perceptions in order to draw on the potency to draw on the experiences that we have in our causal causal body but you know that happened to me what uh, the first time when i practiced the instruction that he took uh, tasha the first time that i met uh, to liberate those uh filamental energy that coming through the universe that penetrated our physical body in different, you know, parallel of uh, up and down that go in and out in our physical body. And I, I follow kind of the instruction that he gave it to her. And for my, my experience was like, when I was uh, connecting from my feet, bring all that filament of energy to my whole body and then like wrap it up my body, like, you know, like a mommy. And I suddenly felt so much energy, so much. I was so warm, 
And then I was feeling like a like a very, very uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. And in one point, I lost my consciousness. And I woke up like four hours later. I didn't know if I was alive or something. Then when I started looking that I brought my awareness, I realized that I didn't know how much time I was there because I practicing in the floor at that time. Uh, I talking about almost like a, more than 17 years ago, I think that happened. And then, you know, you get, it, it's like, a, oh, but where I, where, 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 what happened in that period of time that I was not aware of my consciousness, where I went, you know, and how, how, how can I be able to practice something like that and be aware of where I going? You know, that's that was my my question on myself. But you know, if I'm able to go to this high level, and then if I don't know what I do, what's the point to do it? Yeah. Well, and this is this you're absolutely right. And this is where the astral or spiritual hygiene comes in. And this is why we mm -hmm. are discussing the other layers of our experience in order to have more awareness, have more wisdom so that we can use our will and our love, the trinity of the mm -hmm. three, love, wisdom and will to 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 mm -hmm. really walk the different dimensional realms, you know, and yeah. you know, experiences. But let's yeah. also Let's also, um, you know, remember you had that experience 17 years ago. You're mm -hmm. no longer the person that you are now. Yeah. Yes, I, I think mm -hmm. I think we've had you on this show now for so long to know that you are becoming a master of 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 your spiritual hygiene and of your energy hygiene in this reality, mm -hmm. this realm here right mm -hmm. now. So it's more yeah. like this is where the trust comes in, and then of course the other thing that that is important because you said something. So can we actually get out of, of all of this dilemma, that harvesting? And at this time, at this point, at this time of the game, it's about focus. What are you focusing on? Are you still focusing on the fight or are you focusing on the flight like you used? Mm -hmm. and, and really, the, the, it all comes down to choice now. And that's what is intelligence? What is emotional intelligence is using the choice that you have come in with and that you've mm. learned how to use your will, how to use your wisdom, how to use your love. What are you investing your love in? And this mm. is getting, you know, this is something we all have to really become masters in, especially in the next couple of years to come, because it's not going to get easier. It's going to get worse. And this is where awareness is not for pussies. It's for people with intelligent, emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. with spiritual hygiene, with energy hygiene, with the clarity of their intent and with the knowingness of what focus creates. Yeah. Yeah. But for my, in my, in my, uh, point of view the way how this visualize the that energy force that we have uh i remember one time when i was a little girl that i had a fever and the fever was so high because they did like uh they removed my tassel and then i saw myself like a big uh blue balloon like big 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 blue balloon and then i could see my physical body lay down in the bed that means that in that moment, maybe the fever was so high that my 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 double, like they call, my other part of me, it took it got out of the physical body in some way to release maybe the suffering or, or the burning that I was feeling in my body because I was outside my body and I was seeing my body and I was aware that that I was out of the body. And however, I was like a big ball, completely round ball in, in blue. And then when he's explained that, that, that we had that energy surrounding our physical body, it depends how much, um, we, like you said, hygiene is in my practices and, uh, and how I take care because in our daily life, we have so many challenges that sometimes inter interfere we ask to continue that and enhancing that energy to becoming stronger and stronger 
because I I took it for myself. Sometimes I had to, you know, put the, the brake and come back and ground on myself. My because I get involved in so many stuff that we had to do in 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 life every day. You know, for family members, and if we had a business, you know, it's so much. And then how how can we do like you know keeping the balance? No, go to just one side or only spiritual or in another moment only in the physical one i for me the 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 challenge part is how i can stay center and not going to one side or to the other side i want to bring topic in the in relation to what you are describing and we were listening what you just now was sharing and it was excitement in your voice and it was some kind of connection to that experience through your excitement. So now uh, this is how actually we need to ask ourselves, what makes me excited in this life? Where I uh, um, have that spark inside of me that makes me look into that direction and walk into that direction to have some excitement yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in your experience of life and this is where we need to uh really look from what point inside of us we are looking we are having that experience uh in addition to that, this is actually a mechanism how that structure in astral world got into human life, into human experience, and convinced human being to walk that fast. And mm -hmm. you see, it's not natural, but because it's showing with our human uh, um, experience, human uh activities that we do as human beings, you have to separate and practice that separately. And it's not connected to human experience. It's not natural. It's not mm -hmm. natural for human being. You see, you have to say, wait for something to experience something else. For if we centered in centrally connected to source, that separation, that division, wouldn't exist mm -hmm. it will be wholeness of your experience so now another question let's ask where is that part in human body human physical body that is has connection to source because obviously when we work from the dantian it's not human experience in totality. It's something addition to human experience or something that is substituting human experience. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have to have that part in human body, physical body, that is straight connected to source and will make our human experience complete and whole with everything who we are, all powers included. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's connected with excitement. Because if you're not excited, you have to make yourself experience something. Yeah. You won't put all your energy. You will you won't even have that energy inside of you. Mm -hmm. Bubbly. Yeah, it's a, it's like a what you said right now, mass with something that he told uh Taisha about the that he says something like when perception expands, nothing is real and nothing is imaginary. It's like our imagination becomes real. Because it will become real in any case because we are this reality. We mm -hmm. are creating this reality. So it will yeah. become real. Now, in addition to uh, looking into excitement, I know in my understanding, we have only two sources for excitement in our body, two glands that produce that special chemical, that hormone that gives us physically um, sensation of being excited. It's adrenals and it's um, pituitary that mm -hmm. is um, making um, uh, oxytocin. Mm -hmm. So uh, all fear experiences, 
this included with sorcery, it's connected to adrenals. And even work with Dantian, lower Dantian, connected to using adrenals. I just had um, a, a workshop with uh, a woman from uh, China. And uh, you know all, we had this period in 80s, I believe, when that uh, spa, um, uh, outburst of uh, magical children with powers was in China. It was everywhere uh, in articles and even in videos. They were showing how those kids can read with different parts, can do some stuff like uh, taking pills from sealed bottle on a table. So they were using power. I was talking with this woman and she said, I was researching what was happening with those kids later. And mm -hmm. they all got out of power and they all got depleted their kidney function to the point they couldn't even survive. They had to have some special involvement of medicine, physical mm. medicine, to support their kidney function. Mm. So that excitement, this is what gives you using your adrenals. And you see, consequences, not so good. Not so good even for your physical body experience to continue yeah. with life. Yeah. But yeah. if we look into this oxytocin thing and start to dig deeper, what is connected to? When we do produce that oxytocin, when our pituitary start to activate, give us that kind of excitement? Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting question. And I know researchers who dig into this question this is what they discovered. Our, the most easiest experience to produce oxytocin, it's connection with just born baby. It's produced naturally. We are stepping into that vibration, mm -hmm. this connection to subtle body, that our physical body producing that oxytocin. And we are in that state of, uh, excitement, but if we start to translate into human emotions, this is that love without any reason. I <laughs> love this baby. Yes. Yeah. This is connection we can look in our search for what part in our physical human body has straight mm -hmm. connection to source. Yeah. 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 Can so, um, you can uh, also produce oxytocin by hugging someone for 20 seconds. Mm. It activates the oxytocin hormones. Exactly. See, this is not connected to, uh, to any fear, uh, like a source for experience or whatever. This is all we are talking, hugging, looking at that baby, having that experience of melting down looking at that baby for no reason what is that we call as humans love correct they do call oxytocin something love hormone. something like that it, but it's not that love in uh, like uh, intimacy that we have with as a person it's a different quality of love vibration so this is kind of like pointing us to look around heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. and have something that connection that we have naturally connection to source in human physical body. So this is great. There's so, so much. Let me let me add to that. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of not just separating love from the Trinity, to be honest. Love wisdom and will go together for me because that is part of the source the source has a mind and the source has a will and the source is love so all, all three of those together unless we are very aware that we are throwing and chunking everything into love but that is part of that uh, otherwise we're just going to do exactly the same and go into separation yeah so we got to be very uh, aware of that. I mean, what um, um, 
Hermenia was saying is that she was explaining an out-of-body experience and Darina, you know, very, very correctly says you've got to be careful with out-of-body experiences. Yes, it might blow out the negative emotions and the limitations that we experience in a physical body because we expand beyond the physicality. And, you know, when she explained that she could actually see herself lying on the bed or underneath the bed or something. And those are experiences that can be had in order to practice, uh, you know, connection to source. But we got to be very aware of the uh, the danger of that in terms of uh, how we can go into burnout with that, you know, over extending the adrenals and like, you know, what what Arena just just mentioned here. There, there is another, there's another way. I mean, and this is what we had last time we talked about and hygiene. Last time we spoke uh, about embodied spirituality. So we are not advocating here out of body experiences. We are not advocating to get out of the body, but really to start reframing pretty much every single word, every single concept, every single um, experience that we are having in this reality here right now and see how we can how we can fit it all together and how we can through focus and through intention stay out of entanglement you know and be aware of the love the wisdom uh, and the will and the capacities that we have innately tapped or untapped to step straight into the source and to connect straight with the source and I think at this level of the game, I just want to mention one thing is, you know, we always talk about being in the present moment. I'm actually looking at now, appreciate yourself as an eternal being. And there is no past, there is no present, there is no future, because it's obviously all happening at the same time. So what if we can actually take it to the next level, purely from an understanding perspective, to say we are always in the eternal moment and just cut out yes. all that separation between the different time, mm. times. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can say, okay, I'm in my body as an internal being in this eternal moment where everything happens at the same time. That cuts out. Are we now in the future coming back or in the past coming forward? Or where are we? That kind of thing. And that really allows us to expand without going outside of our bodies, without yeah. taking the consciousness outside the body, but keep it in eternally, internally here right now. But you know, Martina, that's one of the things that he uh, advised a patient that is take a lot of skill and discipline to be able to release that, that energy because it can cause very damaged even for the person to be functionally this energy that we need to be able to money uh, to experience life if we using that trying to awake that energy and then can harm ourselves that that's one of, one of the one of the recommendations that he, he told her, uh, because she said how i can do it myself is that you have to be you have you have to be uh, like a Discipline and very, very. Um, it's not. It's not like a like you have to be afraid. It's like you have to be able to do it without hurt the physical body, because trying to do the, that liberation or the etheric body can damage our uh, release energy or make a hole in our energy field that will be affecting our well-being of be able to experience our phys our normal physical life. Uh, that's the way how understood. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and when I said that about the experience I had with the bowl, it was not that was something that I was trying to do. It's something that I said that I remember that happened to me because I had that high fever. But it was I was not planning to do that. It was like no, no, no. kind of moment of our nets. Yeah, well, that's what the high fever would do anyway, you know, because, you know, it's like in a sleep pattern when the consciousness leaves the body so that the body can actually rest properly. Mm -hmm. So that can happen. Mm -hmm. But let me just ask you a question, Herminia. When was that book written? Uh, 1992. 1992. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yeah. what do we have now? 2023. Yeah. Exactly. We got to yep. be slightly aware of the difference in time. When these 
the this book was probably very apt at the time uh -huh. right? now we're talking quite a few years beyond that we are much uh -huh. further ahead and and let's uh -huh. remember we are a don't want to call it a product but we are very much linked to earth and earth is no longer the earth that it was in 92 so the yes. capacities that we have at our fingertips uh -huh. now yeah uh -huh. are very different to what we had in 92 right yes uh -huh. now, the portion that was put forward in 92 uh, will still be applicable to certain people who haven't done any work along the spiritual path and i yes think, but i would almost safely say that we are not part of that path anymore yeah. so you know we have to take the and I, I love looking into this because now we can say okay well actually you know what we've out created that mm -hmm. we've out created that we actually daily out create that and that leaves me back to your first question you've asked like pretend are we still pretending that nothing happens mm -hmm. very very good question because mm -hmm. we are masters of pretending that we haven't moved beyond those levels of manifestation. Mm -hmm. So what are we still pretending that we haven't acknowledged that we are already capable of being and doing and having that if we would acknowledge it, we could actually just bloody have it and be it and do it, right? Without fear, without going back into the solar plexus, We've moved beyond the solar plexus. The uh -huh. solar plexus moved up into the throat. Yeah. Uh -huh. the sun. yeah, we're working from the heart, as Arena says, from the mind. Yeah. It's coming yeah. together in the higher chakras. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't take us out of this body. No. Uh -huh. It keeps uh -huh. us in our physical body, but it keeps us in the eternal now. It keeps us connected multidimensionally so that we can start collecting all our divine fragmentation from everywhere with joy, mm -hmm. with curiosity, with fun, without depleting our adrenals. Yes. We used to in the old days when we were trying to be spiritual. Now, mm -hmm. none of us wants to be, wants to play spiritual, the spiritual. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're just emanating the teachings, the learnings, the experiences mm -hmm. that we've actually had and keep um, creating. But we yeah. need to step it up from a perspective here uh -huh. to appreciate yeah. that that's where we're really doing it, to acknowledge that that's what we, we are already living in the eternal now. Now, what does that look like? What, what techniques can we use with that? What tools can we use with that to keep us in the flight, not going back into the fight? And uh -huh. that's a bloody choice. And frankly, uh -huh. that's a choice you got to do on a daily basis, on a second-to-second -second moment in that internal now, eternal now. And yes, yeah. make choices that take us back into the other place because in that quantum field, it's all there. It's all available. Nothing is destroyed. Energy cannot be destroyed. That's why at higher levels of consciousness, of awareness, it's even more important to keep our focus and our intention clear. Let's look into uh, embodiment. So we don't want to do it outside of body. We want to do it through body, with body, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's look at a mechanism, how it works. How our physical body can support to have that expansion, yeah, to use those powers, our natural powers, mm -hmm. through physical body, in physical world, through physical world. And yeah. here we can look into these three things that Martina already mentioned, wisdom, uh, will, and love, yeah, those three uh uh, parts in our body that connected to this uh, concept, wisdom, love, and will. And here we need to look into connection of this to pretending. Martina said we are masters to pretend. Maybe it's not pretending. Maybe it's an old habit. How we had our experience in those times where we had all those structures working in uh, creation, 
astral world working, supporting those experiences based on adrenals. So pretending maybe it's a mastery that we got through shifting from our real source connection in physical body center that is connected to source, shifting to some another center part of our body that was good at guiding us through those experiences. There is ancient definition of being smart and being wise. They are different, different and they give completely different connection to your state of being at that time when you are smart and when you are wise. So this is what they say. You have to give up being smart to become wise. They don't go together. And what is smart in our human understanding? It's all that we logically can conclude. This is being smart, correct? What is being wise? Can you decipher what is being wise? What is that? To my understanding, it's knowing in a moment where you need to go, how it's to do. This is when you're wise and you know depths of situation all together like a wholeness, then you can make your choice of direction. Uh, so obviously it's not coming from our logical structure construct that we are built being smart. So we have to use from where we can become wise. From what point, what vibration we can become wise. I'm talking and trying to connect to mind that we are using in a way we are using as human culture. How do we use our brain? How do we use our mind? People still make a lot of centering uh, in mind, trying to answer huge questions related to reality. It's not happening because with our experience, what we were having before and why we actually we are able to have those experiences in a way we had them before. Uh, we had to shift somehow in our body, our center of source connection. And we did. We shifted and we placed all responsibility for our making choices on our logic. And we start to use our human brain, not how it was created, purposely created in our physical body, but we were using brain's ability to hear source all the time. This is why we are talking today about returning to connection, heart and brain, working them together. So this is where you need to look deeper uh, into this subject, into this topic, what our brain actually, what function it's making in our body, what is function of our brain. A lot of people already discovered it's antenna. It's a receiver, it's a great processor, but it's not place of our source connection. This is what they discovered. So, Again, I will talk wisdom, not to be smart, be wise. It's not coming from brain. Brain, good translator, good receiver, good processor, but it's not uh, organ that connecting us to wisdom. So here we need to look into this thing. Now, next one, love. Well, hold on, hold on a second, Arena. Okay. Sorry, sorry to, to quickly interrupt you. So who else wants to talk to knowledge uh, versus wisdom so that well, we get... I, I just wanted to say that that i mean i think it has to do a lot with the belief going back to belief mechanics right that i, I think Irina said something earlier which which the, the sp spiritual nature isn't necessarily in the human 
nature, right? And I, I think that it is, but it's been suppressed by the belief mechanics, right? If you look at, look at, you, you know, we were talking about religion earlier and how different religions believe so many different things. But if, if that was your experience growing up, right, coming from this, this belief engine from a specific, um, uh, uh, you know, religious perspective, right? And so that would say, okay, wait a minute, you have to go through, for example, these, these priests or, you know, to be spiritual, right? So I think there's, I think there's been, you know, I mean, looking from ancient times and Egyptian culture and, you know, different past cultures, there's a different idea about what is possible and what is what humans are capable of. So I would just suggest that that some of the belief mechanics and engines really are what are keeping us thinking inside the box, right? And not experiencing that that greater um, spiritual capability that the human body and spirit, you know, really has to offer. Yes, yeah, it but... is connected. Uh, and as Martina said, we are in now 2023. It's not 80s, it's not 90s, it's not 60s, it's not even beginning mm -hmm. of uh, 2000s. Mm -hmm. We are in a different time now. And she said, Martina said, Another thing that we are not part of those people who has those beliefs anymore. Mm. How we, did we? We, we uh, uh, us here, right? But yeah, 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 yeah. A us very here, yeah. great amount mm. of people on this planet who are holding limited belief mechanics. Exactly, exactly. And this is where the focus comes back in again, because the collective consciousness is obviously all around us and, and within us. And, and uh, you know, that's where we have to make our choices, you know, what we said before. And this is where, you know, the, the, a, a quick one here between knowledge and wisdom, which is always a great topic. Um, and I just want to say this one thing, and then I actually want to bring up some tools and techniques in, in going, how, how can we maintain wisdom versus getting lost in in knowledge and and part of part of uh, uh, for me uh the journey between knowledge and wisdom is first of all again an understanding that everything is data in that in that quantum field and every data i can pick up or i can choose not to pick it up um and whatever data i pick up it could be useful to me but i don't have to maintain it within my my even my consciousness you know my my uh, immediate consciousness because it is available in the quantum field so i have access to that at any moment in time but that is where the trust comes in and then of course the the, the main difference between wisdom and and knowledge is to have that source connection and to work with and how is the source connection like arena said uh, the 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 heart and the brain which leads us to intuition so those are those key elements intuition trust source connection what we can keep on looking into and all of that is obviously connected to the physicality and to all the other bodies we don't need to mention here because it is time now to look from an eternal perspective, from an eternal moment perspective, from an eternal, from a no longer separating the different the different bodies or the left and the right side of the brain. We do that if we want to dig deeper and drill into something in particular. But the main the main concern or the main practice would be now: how can we live from an eternal perspective? Now, what practices and tools can we use? to raise or maintain our levels of awareness and consciousness and step into that trusted intuition. What, what, what comes to mind if, if we just give three different examples, three different practices that you might be using, uh, Herminia, that you might be able to still use from the book, but adapt to this level of consciousness. That oh, well, for my, my Sarah, I use the, you know, the uh, integrity exercises in the morning. Because like I shared before with you uh, a few times that I was, I came out of the depression that was like a six, seven hour in a couch. I couldn't get out to take a shower. 
and I start doing those exercises that hurt my body, my physical body, to re regain my energy, my strength. Uh, for me, uh, maintaining my physical body healthy, the more healthy possible, is, is my, my must. Because if I don't have the physical body that is healthy, it doesn't matter how much I know about you know, my aesthetic body, then I cannot do anything in this level or experience. And um, and it's like you said, we are in different, and Irina said, and everybody mentioned Tana, Tanya, we are in different level. Uh, I see this, uh, this knowledge from these uh, people, like, uh, like, it's like a ground information that can help me to analyze my experience right now because for example like you said we are like in a quantum field that is more manifested instantly and i had experience on myself let's say that i went to the doctor i went to the hospital emergency i was for four hours in the emergency room they released me to the house and then the doctor supposedly they said they couldn't find anything they said there was maybe a fly from the you know deer fly that maybe bite me and then uh, cause like it can cause uh, Lyme disease. And then in my in my awareness inside myself, I was not accepting that diagnostic. And then when I went to take the blood test that I draw in my blood to 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 test it, I saw myself inside me repairing my blood and asking my blood I had to come in with different results. And that's what the result that came that came negative. Because like you said, we have we have the power to connect with that energy of creation and manifestation. And if we put it in practice, and when we see result like that, then we 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 get a stronger and a stronger accepting that we have the power inside. Right? And then the same thing happened to me when I was doing like a med text for you know my regular test. I always say like a, in one point in my one point I was in the auto and then the nurse was calling the doctor something about me and then by the time they come back I ordered my body to be completely clean and then like I saw like a spot cleaning a spot with whatever they saw and then when they did the text again there was nothing there. You see this I have to interrupt you right there because I love you. I love people like you. Because you're one of those people who pretend that nothing happens, that you have no capacities, that you have no idea what you're doing. Do you actually please re-listen to this once the recording goes out? <laughs> Just saying, you're being a medical intuitive that can create instantly change within your own system in a mo from moment to moment. But you're not acknowledging that. How many of us, have these capacities, not necessarily that in particular, but other capacities, and do not acknowledge them. And is that the reason why we sometimes feel bored? Think, oh, we need to get the hell out of here? No, this is we need to start acknowledging what we're already doing. This is this is a wonderful capacity that you've just described that you have. This is something for you to look into to start practicing and working with other people. That's what I call a, a medical intuitive. Let's park that on one side, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to the first tool, breath. There's nothing better than breath where we're staying with our physicality. We're not leaving. We're focusing on the breath. Mm -hmm. And then we can play with breath. We can yeah. do whatever we want. If you want to work still on your chakra system, the old one, well, that's what you do. If you want to work on the new one, well, that's what you do. But you use mm. your breath. Now we've got Alfredo Torres here. He's the breath master. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he yes. wants to share some of his breathing exercises yeah. with us. We yeah. can combine breath with visualization. Alfredo, do you want to come in on this? I was going to not come in because I'm just like, oh, I'm in Tarago again, talking about breathing. But it's the <laughs> ultimate practice, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a tangent here for a second, Herminia, because I've been so caught up in all these advanced spiritual practices, like, got to do all this, got to visualize, like, all these, like, advanced practices. And, like, 
I've gotten to a certain level with them, but a part of me just like I can't, I can't bring them to the manifestation that I want. So it's just like you know what, screw all these advanced practices. I'm just going back to the basics, the one on one basics. If I master anything, it may not be advanced psychic abilities or whatever, but the breath is the ultimate foundation for anything. It's like <laughs> so I've just been investing my my focus, my energy, and like realigning my breath to not so much about creating magical experiences because I've been able to do that, but it's like using the breath for intentions, relaxation, all these things that <laughs> that I need within my life to rest, uh -huh. recover, regenerate, rejuvenate, all that uh -huh. stuff, you know? So it's for me, you know, doing everything I can to master this breath, amplify this breath, fortify this breath. So cold plunges, I do as much on as I can, but cardio, it's the ultimate and Irina was going off about um, like the lower chakras, the sexual chakras, and like the part of the. Let me get out my son for a second. So I've been working on mastering this uh, soma breath technique, which is basically it's pranayama. It's just pranayama labeled soma, you know, but it's mastering this rhythmic breath. This rhythmic breath where you're. Show us. Yeah, like I was gonna, I was gonna share it on December, but oh, I've been okay. trying to, I've been trying to get back in the basics, spiritual hygiene. I realized because I was blaming everybody else, I was blaming the teachers, blaming the teachings, just mm -hmm. pointing directions. Well, these teachings didn't give me the results that I wanted. I wanted to be able to be a, a psychonaut, super psychic, and I didn't get the results I wanted. But then when I look back at it, everybody's telling me it's like it's uh, it's. Me, the problem. I'm the problem. I'm because I've been neglecting my spiritual hygiene. I'm like, oh, I'm spiritual hygiene. I'm keeping my energy clear around me, but I'm poisoning my mind with, you know, YouTube influencers, all these little subtle things that poison my water, you know, poison my mind, just pollute it. It's just small little bits, pieces here and there, but it all collectively adds up and it dirties the pond. The realization I got when I was. Uh, I asked the universe to send me a, I want a DMT experience, damn it. I want instant gratification, <laughs> DMT experience. That's so what I was telling the universe. So I was writing my prayers, like, I want a DMT experience. Someone hook me up with DMT vape. Someone, I want a Lucia light experience that blasts me off. And, you know, universe heard my, you know, heard my cry. And it, it some guy. <sighs> Alfredo. Uh, a few days ago. Oh, what's up? <laughs> Give us a breathing exercise and we listen. We, we, we want to hear all about what you got on the 6th of December because Alfredo is going to come in on the 6th of December and tell us about basics of breath and spiritual hygiene. But today, that's, that's my game plan. just need to have a one breathing exercise <laughs> that we can take away for people to practice. What you got? Whatever. This guy, he gave me some mushrooms, and I, I've been, I took one, and the second one I'm going to take eventually, but it, it made me realize, like, I'm doing the right thing, damn it. The breath is the foundation. You know, tripping hard, and you're getting all blasted off, you always got the breath to center yourself, and I was able to constantly center myself throughout the trip. But basically, what I do, I don't have it with me, but I have a little timer, and I set it to three to five minutes, three to five minutes of consistent rhythmic breathing. Equally in, equally out. And you can change the rhythm. I even added a metronome too. So a metronome, deep, 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 deep. the less I have to think, the better. Cause I don't wanna be thinking about anything. The less I think, the more I'm in the flow, I'm action, I'm embodied which is the whole purpose. So you do this, I do this three, every every freaking day I do this. I do rhythmic breathing for three to five minutes. Good. So, so, and then yeah. after the rhythmic breath, I was gonna give you the last, uh, the, it's just a fundamental practice that anybody can practice. You can look up summer breathing, they got music and all this cool stuff, but you do this rhythmic breathing, equally in, equally out with no pauses. No and once pause. you get to the last breath, you breathe all the way in and you squeeze at that. It's a second chakra they call it like the Muda Banda or whatever. 
Hula banda. Squeeze yeah. there root. for a little bit. Release. And then from there, just don't breathe for as long as you can. Usually you can go like, you're first starting off, it's like 30 seconds. Eventually you work up to a minute or two minutes, three minutes. I can go four, three to four minutes when I'm in that super relaxed state. You hold for as long as you can. And when you have to take a breath in, you take a little sip from the mouth and then release. You want to keep this pause going as long as you can. It's called intermittent hypoxia. And this intermittent hypoxia is where the healing occurs and your body is relaxed. And it causes something within the body that activates it to, to grow or develop or regenerate and all this stuff. But for me, it creates mystical meditative experiences, which I cherish, I love, and I, you know, I, it's part of my daily practice because it's always that center bliss that I can activate, create. For me, it's my instant gratification, mystical experience every day. So I manifest this as much as I can throughout the day, morning, midday, break, work, night, whatever. I'm just always doing this. Thank you. you take a long breath. Thank you. Thank are you, are you do a pause. Sorry. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry. I'm almost. I'm almost. I'm almost done. So you do. Okay. You do the pause for three or five or for three minutes, two minutes, whatever. You do a sip, and then you hold for as long as you can. And then the last breath, that's the key part. That's you breathe in as much as you can. And you're breathing in from the sex, the, the Mulavanda chakra, sacral chakra. You breathe it in and you squeeze. And you allow this to squeeze. And you'll feel the energies, you know, kind of surge up from your sexual chakra all the way up your spine, all the way to your head. And, and you can even squeeze your whole body with it too if you want to. You want to intensify it. And usually by then, that's where things are vibrating. It gets super intense, depending how relaxed you are, and you can create your own little magical embodiment experience through that. And you can do there's all sorts of things you can do to amplify that. But to me, it's the ultimate practice, and I'll, I'll sum it up. I know I'm taking it away, but can I ask? I'll open can the door. Ask Alfreda, uh, yes. Do you do you see observing yourself doing this practice that your excitement is growing and more stable in your life, and easier to hold excitement doing this practice? Did you notice about that? Yes, yes. It always produces results that propel me forward because it doesn't matter if I'm happy, I'm I'm caught up in some stuff, whatever. It's consistent results. And they grow with intensity the more you do them. And they develop. I noticed all of my being is developing differently the more I master this practice. So it's consistently bringing new results. And then you can bring it in with other things. But yeah, it's like you, you continually reap what you sow when you do this practice. And that's something I know that I've reaped what I've sowed. Dedicating not to advanced practices, but just the basic, simplistic, fundamental embodied breath. <laughs> Try to keep so, myself from just... <laughs> Go ahead, Marina. And we observe uh, uh, Alfredo. He is happy. He's vibrating on different vibration than we uh, uh, were looking before and observing before. So possible, we have to make our research and connection to that excitement, how it's related to reality, how it's related to practices. We are all trying to practice to reach some results and why those practices are still coming to our life, connection to excitement. Why even talking about our experiences not constant, but some experiences in our life in relation to practice is so exciting for us. And we want to talk and talk and talk about those things. And usually we want to understand something. So what do we want to understand recalling our experiences? What is that? Uh, in, uh, in my uh, observation and experience, uh, I made the conclusion that those practices so exciting for us because they are connected to reality and they are opening some pieces of reality and understanding about reality. So excitement, practice, bringing excitement, a practice connected to pieces of reality that opening uh, and uh, power inside. This is what uh, we already put together here 
in addition to all this, I want to return us to talk about trust. What is trust energy? What is trust state? Uh, and you know all, if you trust into something, you convinced 100%, no doubt, no any thoughts, no nothing. you just moving into the direction and everything unfolding in front of you when you trust. Even everything that people would say it's impossible, it's still unfolding in front of you when you are in that energy of trust. Tanya brought concept of beliefs. But if we look trust and belief, they are different. Trust is not belief. So what is trust? Trust is not coming from our logic, never. Because when you trust, it's very even different, uh, difficult to explain logically why you are trusting. Why you so convinced? Why you so uh, know that this is what it is when you trust into something? It's, it's not belief. And again, I will try to uh, direct us to look into that power inside. What vibration inside of us bring us to this trust? What is that trust? What, what we are when we are in that vibration of trust? And uh, where is that place inside of us, our physical body that is connected to trust? Anyone? In what state you need to be to have that trust going in you all the time that is bringing you wisdom. When you mm -hmm. trust, you're not logically creating your way. You just know entire scoop and you just move. You don't I mean, even need I... your steps, everything available for you. And you are usually coming into that vibration of bliss into that excitement vibration. So maybe we can look into connection of all these things. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, it's funny because uh, uh, Alfredo, that you're talking about the, the breathing and, and it's, it's wonderful to remind ourselves that, that simple thing free that we don't have to pay for because they don't know how to measure <laughs> Any case, I was talking to my uncle last night. I said uh, to tell him to breathe because uh, the more important thing to uh, for our life is the uh, breathing because we coming experiencing physical life through this. Uh, you know, the first thing that we take a breath. Then when we live in our physical body, we take the last breath too. And then I said that's the more important aspects in our life. And we sometimes we talking like a uh, grounded um. We don't we don't recognize and we don't know bring that awareness about how important is the breathing and breathing consciousness uh like bringing that energy uh that fire or life inside in our physical body and that's why uh in in this book they they very very precise about in the recap re recapitulation is very the the process uh you know the moving, bring whatever you want to release and, and erase it and going back and That's forth. Yeah. That, that, that the recapitulation is, is the main key in, in, in Taisha um, uh, training. How, how can they taught her how to release and let it go everything that experience she had in her life for her to become what she was supposed to be become, you know? And it was the breathing the more important tool that they have. So I'm, I'm, I can offer something on trust as well. And I was just thinking, I can't remember the exact uh, wording of this, but the most mundane uh, tasks are the most sacred ones. And I, I want to I wanna bring trust in from the three levels, from the, the wisdom, the will, and the, the love uh, level. When I look at trust, from the wisdom level, then I have to be acknowledging that trust falls under the law of process. Now, this is not something that happens overnight. You don't just wake up and trust. It's actually connected to will, the trial and error. It's got to be something that we have to, the process of trial and error. That's where the will aspect comes in. 
And then I would say the love aspect of this of trust would be the joy and the curiosity of learning how to trust, of creating these experiences, these earthly experiences, to really use the fabric of existence that is love, um, to create that elevated levels of trust. I love Martina's note that she said, um, um, Marisa, sorry, Marisa's note. She said, trust, uh, she wrote in our chat, uh, how she did it, let me look. Like going again. into our heart's wisdom. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you see, when we talk about trust, it's not logically. So mm -hmm. it's not connected to brain. And really what Marisa is saying, it's a heart wisdom. So maybe heart, this is that organ inside of our physical body, mm -hmm. can give us lots of spiritual answers. And again, I'm not talking about human understanding of heart. I'm talking about spiritual technology. What um, Tanya was mentioning uh it's connected to physicality. It is inside of us. So maybe if we look from spiritual perception, what is hard as spiritual technology, that will give us a lot of answers about our uh, searches, about our uh, exploration and uh, excitement and all that thing. So another thing I want to bring about brain um capability what is brain um specificity in relation to heart and uh what brain can do uh brain can listen and hear what is happening inside of our body it's a translator so mm -hmm. this is gives us logical translation what's happening inside this is how we humanly uh can have experience it's kind of like we need this logic in our linear time correct so uh maybe that so much uh emphasizing we put on our brain because maybe this organ our brain can bring us connection to our understanding um, technology of our body and translate translate for us and give us answer ways that part in our physical body that can make that embodiment of everything who we are possible through physical body. Absolutely, and th this is a, is a is a really good way of looking at at our uh, entire technology. Because you see, I'm I'm always a bit weary about taking one of the organs out and say this is the only interpreter. Let's say the brain is the antenna, but all the organs interpret the information that is coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yes. So, so let's let's just look let's look at all of it because this is not a time and I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep throwing that in again and again because it's time to stop separating you know we know that the mind and the brain have to work together and so does the gut and so does the spleen and the liver and and the 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 the, chair, the, the lungs and everything you know we need to start looking from all of this as one mechanism now. You know, mm -hmm. like we're no yeah. longer wanting to look at, you know, uh, this is astral, this is that. And we will always go back to that. Yeah. And it's important to stress all of this. Um, but the body is a technology that interprets the energy that is coming in. Mm -hmm. And that requires trust. It requires the liver needs to trust the information that comes in just as much as the heart. Right. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. And if you add to this and connect to these seven colors of our experience, that we can color the same experience, but into seven colors. Yeah. And actually it's very important when you centered, 
if you centered in one color, this is how you will have your experience. This is how you will interpret your experience. So it is, again, we maybe need to look into where we centered, mm -hmm. how we can where is that again part in our body that can give us seven colors all together mm -hmm. without dividing? Yeah. But, and that's Martin, what, yeah, I like that. The center, yeah. we can all center it, but having said that, we all need to bring all the information in and then we can center it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like but that. If, really. if, if we activate that power energy from it, uh, if we can uh, integrate our ethereal body together with the physical body that means we had just one thing that we don't have to be thinking about a particular organs or the brain or the heart because it could become unity and but it has the unity in how the manifestation and the power to manifest it is already Ooh. integrated you exactly. can be living without an without the etheric body but we don't have the awareness that's what i mean well, that's why we are talking about it yeah yeah. Exactly. Good point, Herminia. This is why again I will return. Where is that part in our physical body that mm -hmm. give us remembering about that everything whole and exist right now? All colors, all bodies, everything, everything. Where is that part in physical body if you want that embodiment? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Herminia, you being the, the the medical intuitive here, right? Uh, what they say is it's in the nervous system and in the in the meridian system this is apparently where we are connecting to our uh, etheric body for some reason I, I you know it's nice it's 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 but there has to be more than that as far as i'm concerned but that's just me being maybe ignorant well, it's, it's, I, I can no longer live with those divisions but that's uh -huh. what's being said etheric body is connected to the nervous system and to the uh, no, I'm I'm relying here. The nervous system, I think, is the astral body. You guys know, etheric body is the is the um, um, the 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 meridian system and all of that. And this is why I can no longer make those distinctions and I stand yeah. for correction. But if you wanted to, there is information that you can look at. Well, that's what that's what I mean. That if we integrated that powerful the uh, etheric body. That is the one that controls the breathing and is the one that connected with the source. That everything is just one part. It's not something that we have to divide it anymore, like it's you said. Yeah, and it, it doesn't work for me anymore because if I look yeah. at I think it's the astral level, uh, astral uh, body that is connected officially to the yeah. uh, to the um the physical and the etheric. To the nervous system, you know, because mm -hmm. it's connected to the emotions and all and all of mm -hmm. that. At the end of the day. That's all I can say to this is we wouldn't be physically uh, able to um, operate if we wouldn't have these bodies already. So there's nothing we need to integrate. Well, as but the, my point is not be it's integrated, but we using it most of the time automatic mode without the awareness, the the combination, the interconnection between one another. But we are awareness that is there. Mm. Because most of the time we are not aware that we have that. Mm. Because we yeah. get caught up in our daily life experience. That's what I mean. Yes. Yeah. And in addition to this awareness, you mentioned nice word unification. If we only in that vibration of unification that we see our experience as whole and complete, correct? So mm -hmm. what is that? part in our body when we have experience of vibration of unification naturally but, what where is that spot in our body but, that put us into that vibration of unification but according to what i was reading in the book that he's explained to her uh, well, in one of the moments that because we had to be programmed to be able to navigate it in this 3D world, right? Then that energy, that energy okay. that... When you talk about programming, it's already using belief system. So you have to give your free will agreement to some belief that will give you that programming. Is this your experience or someone else's experience? 
Yeah, but, but well, when I'm talking about that energy that is encapsulated in our physical body, that we have to release it to reopen that that is inside. That some people say is in the in the uh, sexual organs, is encapsulated there. In the in the root chakra, some people said that power that we have for creator in this physical world is in the is in the first chakra, in the root chakra. And other people, this energy is encapsulated in our uh, sexual energy force. This is uh, we have to be we. This is almost That's like what... going backwards a little bit, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, because we could also we could even look at the etheric body. What is the etheric body in terms of, uh, you know, the the etheric body are beings. If if you go with what Rudolf Steiner is talking about, mm. all the elemental energies, you know, the gnomes, mm. the fairies, mm. they are all etheric. They are in our etheric body. They are connecting to our etheric mm. body, you know. Mm. And, and and things like that. So we gotta be um you know something else I was gonna say to this. Um I personally Jen, Jen, got something to say again, uh, Tanya. I oh, sorry, sorry, Jen was just raising her hand there. Oh Jen, yeah. I, I can't I, remember. I was just gonna say that like as you're talking, it I wanna say too that like this process is cyclical, right? We come to this understanding and we master something and then we kind of come back with spiral, you know. We don't come back to to center you shift the perspective and you can see how it flows but like we go back through these periods of stillness and introspection and marrying all these things together like and when Herminia was talking that was just so prevalent for me was like how how this process we go through these things where we understand everything and all the mystical is all around us and we feel all that integration and that culmination and then it goes quiet again right and it just goes still for a moment again and those moments of stillness are so important to like embrace and just feel and and for me like all these understanding of the the etheric body and the astral body and the emotional body and all these like I understand them, but once I understand them, I have to put that knowledge to the side because getting caught in the weeds is a trap for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 This understanding, it's a translation of your state. Yeah. You touch something, you translate into understanding, into logic, but it's secondary understanding. Again, I will return to that thing. <laughs> Trust vibration is not understanding, is not belief. So where, what kind of vibration you need to be to have that trust, to touch that wisdom mm -hmm. and everything, all possibilities. And where is that spot in our body where we naturally, body had to, has to have that place because it's our experience, all seven colors, all bodies here mm -hmm. in physical body. So where is that place in our physical body yeah. well, that is well, giving us vibration of having all that together? And well, now, sorry, Hermione, go ahead. Go, 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 go again. Sorry, go. Uh -huh. I was just going to say that knowledge and understanding is fluid because it changes all the time. And maintaining that fluidity to me that's wisdom yeah yeah and, and for uh, me i feel in my show up called go tanya sorry <laughs> uh, i was just going to say marissa says seeing ourselves whole and complete heart connecting physical spiritual the meeting place of it all yet recognizing in its all connected from the heart and the heart's wisdom mm. and that vibrates out and mm. and you know just this experience of like knowingness right yes. i've had the experience of knowing something here right in the logical sense but then all of a sudden a whole nother layer opens up and then i know it here in my heart mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and it it opens up this depth and breadth of understanding that you don't get just by knowing it here mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Hard. Yeah. So how we can find that technology in our mm -hmm. hearts 
physical heart, how we can find that technology that can keep us 24-7 is that state of being wise, in trust, connecting to everything, embodying everything. Yeah. It's like they saw, uh, they said that when I know, I know. Again, all the all, that something is the way that I feel that I feel it in my heart, in my solar pleasure. Is I know I cannot explain how I know. Because there's no way how to explain it. Because just you trust because you know. You have a certainty inside. So being in that connection 24-7, and still living your life, physical life, this is kind of like direction to look. Where is that spot in our heart? And does it exist at all? And in what uh, state it exists in our heart? But we, we all know it's a heart. But it's not hard just like physically or emotionally we understand heart. We have to go deeper and find that technology, that spot that gives us naturally that vibration that we embody everything. Love that. Love that. Now that's yes. something to look at. That toroidal field that we are talking about is actually the fifth dimension. That's mm -hmm. us in the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. where everything is available and everything is known, and that's not somewhere we're going when we we don't have to leave our bodies because that's our connection, okay? And that might help to to again understand that we can't just look at it from a linear perspective in one in one mm -hmm. multifaceted where we start to have to look at ourselves. From as a multidimensional being in the eternal now, from moment to moment. But thank yeah. you, Marina. Yes. Being yes. physical. Being yeah, physical. Yeah. physical. Yeah. To live, we have we can have all those experiences being in physical body. Absolutely. Because all mm -hmm. these different organs, you know, are connecting to all these different dimensions, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And, and that that's not another body's experiences we need that's something we can understand or not or feel or not intuit or not be have the wisdom or whatever through experiences yeah yeah we just need exactly. to find that point in our physical body where we can center and then we have all that embodied for us naturally yeah thank you mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the seven layers of our heart. Okay, seven layers of our heart. I haven't heard of the layers of the heart, but that's cool too. So the, what the seven seven dimensions? Maybe I don't know, but we can we can talk about this at some stage too. Mm. Fantastic. Well, if uh, maybe we can connect with the. I usually connect a lot with the water elements. It give me a lot of peace and strength. Maybe for the closing, when you're ready, we can do like a, a little. Uh, you are in the right direction. Water plays huge role in finding that spot and what that spot connected to and how it works to bring that embodiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are nine months in the wound for instant the water. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what happened with Martina? Does oh, I'm still oh. here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were just sitting so still for a minute. You look like you were frozen. Oh, do you want me to do the? <laughs> no, I was waiting when you were ready to do the the closing, Martina. Let me know. Then I'll do the invocation. <laughs> yeah. Do well. Let's do that. Let's uh, let's do your invocation. And then we, we're going to close it for today. But as usual, a very lively and very uh, useful, uh, you know, gathering and discussion. Thanks, girls. So oh, I'll, you do you... Uh, I'll, get, I'll get outside in the park and then I, 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 I'll take my picture off because... <laughs> Sorry about that, but this is... I know like why I so you do that. And then I'll, I'll invoke the... Energy, love, joy, unity, and peace. Fantastic. It's exactly what we need.
Okay, ahí es como... Okay, I'll put it the sun. Oh, it's beautiful. One, two, three. Cristo Riati, Cristo Riati, Cristo Riati. Love, love, love. Joy, joy, joy. Unity, unity, unity and peace. Love, love, love. Joy, joy, joy. Unity, unity, unity and peace. Love, love, love. Joy, joy, joy. Unity, unity, unity and peace. Aho. 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 Fantastic. Like that. That was fun. That was fun. Let's, and I, I'm going to throw in a little bit of Fox energy from the heart. <laughs> Thanks Thank very you. much, Aminia, for coming on uh, our medical intuitive. And we oh. will have more discussions on that as you keep exploring that uh, a bit further. Oh. Oh, thank you for all your support and your, and your love in your heart. That's because together we can do better things. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks very much, guys. And I'll see you next week. Huh? And Thanks, next Jessica. week we've got uh, Tanya running yeah. the show. Do you want to... Next week we're talking about astrocartography with Michelle the Mystic. We'll see you next Wednesday. Fantastic. Thank Bye. you. Thank, Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.